morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving shop, and I'm working on a project for a, a magnum-sized uh, field pintail decoy, and I'm not going to get into the details of that and show the blow-by-blow -blow carving, but one aspect of uh, constructing this pintail drake is an insert, a tail insert, so the pin feather I'm making out of oak, and I thought it might be worthwhile to just do a little feature on if you're doing a pintail gunning decoy and you need sturdiness in the tail so that uh, basically you can pick this decoy up by the tail if you want to. We're going to look at holly as a potential hardwood for that. I'm using oak and I'll show you how uh, one way to make a tail insert like this uh, for your hunting decoys. Hey, if you're valuing the content of my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Several of you have done that. I appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything and it does help me out as I continue to build this channel. So let's take a closer look at a hardwood tail insert for a gunning pintail. I've got a little block of holly here just for uh, demonstration purposes. And then I've got some oak and this is one inch oak tread stair. Uh, it's really good base material for keels. Uh, I like that one inch thickness. But there are a couple of different approaches to inserting a, a hardwood tail. Uh, one approach would be to just plan on inserting the block. So you get a block that's sized appropriately for the width of the tail that you want to make. This is my top-down pattern. This is my side pattern that I've cut out of the pattern. So you've, I've got a block that will fit and you may just want to insert that at the proper angle into the pattern. And I'm just drawing around the block in the proper orientation. And you can go ahead when you're doing your side profile cutout and cut that section out of the body and go ahead and epoxy your block in place and then cut your side profile and uh, top profile as though it's all one piece. I prefer to, to cut the tail out separately and uh, do that by using my pattern and Tracing uh, the side pattern, which I won't take a lot of time to do, but you get the idea. And then on top of the block, trace the top down profile. And I leave this material in here. I've just got it cut out um, because I wanted to leave that material on the body pattern. Now one one thing I would recommend, this block is a little short. I like to have a little longer block and I'm actually going to be uh, doing it in oak. Uh, the little longer block gives you something to hold on to because as we're cutting a side profile out on the bandsaw, I want my hands out here away from any blade activity. Uh, and you'll see that when I go through the demo. Same here. Hands out here, blade doing the work here. So I'm completely away and safe from the bandsaw blade. Okay, once we're done here, we're going to end up with something like this. This is the one I made for this bird over here. And... Uh, <clears throat> basically cut out a profile on the body and uh, then we're able to insert that tail epoxy it in place use a little bondo or wood filler and uh, it becomes a very strong pin tail for your gunning decoy this is mainly for beginners that haven't tried this before I know a lot of you do this on a regular basis 
But again, some of these demonstrations are just to get people started. Uh, if you haven't done it before, it might not be intuitive how to go about creating a tail for your pintail decoy, so we'll do that today. All right, now I've got my one inch thick piece of oak trimmed to width and length. Notice a little extra length, so I have a handhold out here as we're band sawing. And then I'm using my pattern to trace the top down view and strike a line across so we get this lined up correctly from the side. You can see there's just barely enough material here to hit this side profile with a one inch thick piece. And I kind of made sure that was the case as I drew the pattern because I knew I wanted to use oak for the pin tail. Okay, so we're gonna, similar to cutting out a, a decoy block, we're gonna use the side profile, cut that out first, and then go back to the top-down profile, cut that out. All right, just, just like in cutting out a decoy body, it's important to have the block nice and squared up so that uh, we get nice true cuts through the width of this oak material. So you can see I'm keeping my fingers away from the blade and just carefully following that lower profile line. Oak is very hard material, so go at this slow because you don't want to work your bandsaw blade too hard. You can see I'm staying out of the way, and uh, I know I'm emphasizing that a lot, but I, it's so important. Now, as I get to the end of the cut, I'm going to stop there and carefully back out. Now I'm going to work on the top profile. Same approach. I'm actually going to cut material off here. You know, on a decoy body, I like to keep that top piece intact so that we can use it as a pattern for the top down cut. But this uh, tail is so flat, it's not going to make that much difference. And we can just use the pattern and re-pencil that top view back on the, the board. All right, so I've got the side profile cut out and uh, left this attached down here so that it all kind of hangs together. Now I'm gonna go back with my top profile again and reestablish that since we've lost a little material on the top here. Just reestablish those guidelines. Now we can go back to the bandsaw, cut out the top profile. And when I go around the corner here, it's going to finish that cut and all the pieces will come apart. That's a theory. All right, I've got my blade readjusted and I'm just gonna carefully follow the top down profile. Again, take your time with oak. When I get to the end, I'm going to start to wrap around the end halfway. Do the other side in the same fashion. By the way, you can use this same approach for any type of uh, gunning decoy tail insert that you might want to create. It doesn't have to be a pintail. I've left this tail nice and thick thicker than life, uh, just to add strength to the material in the tail. 
We want it to be nice and strong. Now I'm just clipping off the end there. The pieces come apart and there's the tail piece that we're interested in. Now we've got the rough cut shape established and I just need to go in here with some grinding equipment and kind of bevel this area on both sides. I want to leave plenty of strength, but um, put a little shape to the tail. We we'll use grinding equipment to do that. So also just going back to my pattern and uh, establishing where it meets the body there and uh, just giving myself kind of a guideline on where the culverts are going to match up with the tail feathers. And that gives me kind of a target to shape this area too so I don't take too much material off and leave a bunch of gaps where it's the tail inserts to the body. That makes sense. Now I'm going to use a fine saber tooth burr, three quarter inch kind of ball nose, uh, kind of my go-to bit. And again, this oak is hard as nails, so you just have to take your time and go at it slowly. You know, if you were doing a decorative bird, you could do a similar tail insert with Tupelo. It just would uh, be a lot weaker. And if it's not going to be a functional decoy, if it's going to be on the mantle, you might want to do that. It's still very vulnerable to damage a Tupelo tail that long. So I even on my more decorative birds, I like to use uh, Holly primarily for the tail insert like this, or a piece of oak. You can see I'm just beveling that area to take it down and make it match up with the body and put a little roundness in the tail. I'll speed the video up here so we can just watch this uh, grinding finish up. Okay, sped up the video. Just keep in mind though that oak is hard and you you've got to use more pressure uh, with the grinding bit than you do with Tupelo so just be cautious now I'm just going to generally round things and again beveling that tail area so that it looks natural when it uh, ties into the body And then I'll do some finished sanding on this to smooth things up, but uh, that's about the shape we want. All right, just to finish that up, I just cut the corresponding side profile. I did a little rough job here, that's okay. You know, sometimes you have to go back and forth to get a good fit here. And we're gonna fill this area anyway, so I would use the uh, two-part DevCon epoxy and glue that in place and then use a little Bondo or wood filler around the tail. Let that dry sand it out and you've got a nice strong hardwood insert for your pintail gunning decoy. All right, a pretty quick video this morning and I know this is a pretty basic technique. But for those of you that have never done one before, um, I just wanted to demonstrate that. And I can't emphasize enough, keep your hands away from the bandsaw, be safe. And uh, if you're doing a pintail down the road, my goal is to create kind of a library of resources for people that want to carve decoys and wildfowl. And uh, this will be there when you need it. And hopefully it'll be helpful. Until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you.